The hour of convening having arrived, all members will please report to their assigned seats. All members will report to the House of Representatives. The clerk will ring the bell. All right, we're about to have the morning roll call. About to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? Well, if you haven't, then you come see the clerk. The clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Good morning. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, we will begin our day and week with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 172nd House District, Chairman Sam Watson. Chairman Watson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I tell you, it's always an honor to uh, bring our pastors to the Capitol to allow them to share. And I think there's no better way to, to start the day than this, so thank you. Um, but today I bring uh, my pastor, the Reverend Matt Peake. Uh, Matt is originally from uh, Thomaston, Georgia. Uh, he had graduated from LaGrange College in 2008. Uh, while attending LaGrange College, uh, he was asked to serve as the youth minister there at East Vernon Baptist Church in LaGrange. Um, and that is where Matt truly found his calling. Um, in 2009, um, First Baptist Church Moultrie um, hired Matt to serve as our youth minister. Of course, we quickly realized uh, that he was gifted at sharing the gospel uh, with uh, youth and adults alike. Um, but Matt also found his bride uh, in Moultrie, and uh, so we thought that was a win-win. And uh, anyway, uh, in 2014, uh, God called uh, Matt and Leanna to Pelham First Baptist Church, and so we were disappointed to, to lose them, um, but we also knew that, that God uh, had a plan for this young uh, preacher. But in late uh, 2019, our senior pastor retired, and um, the Lord called uh, Matt back to Moultrie and Leanna and the kids, and so we were excited to, to have them back. Uh, he does a uh, phenomenal job at sharing God's Word and ministering to the people, not only in our church, uh, but in our community as well. Um, but uh, his wife, Leanna, him and his wife, Leanna, have uh, four uh, beautiful children, uh, Maddie Claire, John David, Ellie, and Ruthie. And so I know they're probably at home uh, watching uh, Dad on TV. Um, but I was trying to think about how to uh, introduce Matt this morning. And so I was reminded of his sermon yesterday and what he preached about yesterday. And he talked about how God is good. 
God is, regardless of the circumstances, God is always good and he's always faithful. And that's what I would say about Matt. He is good. Teaching and preaching are no doubt the duties that lie nearest to him. And uh, I hope he's going to bring something good and much needed uh, to us today, the Reverend Matt Pete. Well, good morning. Thank you, Speaker Alston, for the invitation to come and share with you today, and I appreciate all of you members of the House for inviting me to come and share a word today from, from God's Word. I want to thank you, first of all, for your service to our state. Uh, as Sam mentioned, I'm a lifelong resident of Georgia, and I'm grateful for all that you do to keep our state running, running well. I want you to know that we pray for you specifically uh, as a church, as a church family. Uh, we pray for you that the Lord will give you wisdom and guide you in your decisions. As a matter of fact, we had a special time of prayer before this most recent session uh, that the Lord would guide you in the decisions that you make. You know, as, uh, as uh, Representative Watson mentioned earlier, like I said, I was born here in the state. I, I, I was born over on the, uh, uh, on the Georgia coast. I grew up in the, the hills and the woods of central Georgia. And uh, since 2004, my family has resided down in South Georgia, along with about 8 billion gnats. But we are glad to be there, and uh, we are thankful to be serving now at uh, First Baptist of Moultrie. But, you know, as a student uh, growing up here in Georgia, I remember as a middle school student, the only other time I had been to this building was as a middle school student on a field trip. And I remember coming here with my class, and unfortunately, as a middle school student, I was not as much interested in bills as I was interested in girls. So I don't remember too much about that experience, but I am grateful to be here this time with a better understanding of what you do and a greater appreciation of the service that you provide to our great state. But, you know, being from South Georgia, I'm not as familiar with Atlanta, I'm not as familiar with the, the streets here in town, and so I have to rely on some good directions to get me to where I needed to go, and I, I'm grateful for the directions that the Speaker's Office provided to me to get me here uh, on a in a timely manner to get here at the right time, but uh, it reminded me of a story I once heard about the great preacher Billy Graham. You know Billy Graham, a uh, faithful minister for many years, and as the story goes, Billy Graham once went to a town to preach a crusade. And as he was there, he uh, had the need to mail something at the local post office. But being the first time there in town, he wasn't exactly sure where, where to go. So he saw a young child playing on the, the street corner there on the sidewalk. And so he went up to the, to the boy and he said, son, would you mind telling me how I can get to the post office? So the boy told him the directions, turn here, turn there. And uh, Billy Graham thanked him. and He said, hey, son, he said, tonight, if you'll come to the football stadium, I will tell you how you can get to heaven. And the little boy responded, no, thanks. You don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> well, I'm proud to tell you I know how to get to the post office, and I now know how to get to the Capitol and can find my way to this room. But today I want to take just a moment and talk to you about finding your way when you don't know where to go and when you don't know what to do. You know, this last year has been a very difficult year for all of us who have been in leadership, uh, those of us in, in church leadership and in government leadership like yourself. We've been through a very difficult season. A lot of difficult decisions have had to be made. We've been through an unprecedented time with the COVID-19 pandemic. And it leads to a very important question today. What do we do when we don't know what to do? Have you ever had a time when you just frankly didn't know what to do? Whether it was a decision that you were a part of or maybe a vote comes up on this house floor. How do you vote? What should you do? What do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, I would encourage you today to follow the example of the great Billy Graham and ask for directions. When you don't know what to do, ask for directions, but it's not so much asking for directions as it is knowing whom to ask for directions. And so with that in mind this morning, I'm gonna briefly tell you a story from scripture about a man who didn't know what to do and how he asked for directions. The man's name was Jehoshaphat. He may have had a very weird name, but Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah back in the Old Testament times, and Jehoshaphat was a good king. He loved the Lord, and he desired to do what was right and lead the people of Judah to follow God and his commandments. But unfortunately, one day, King Jehoshaphat looked out of his window, and he noticed that there were armies marching against him and the people of Judah. There were many soldiers from foreign lands who had gathered to come and to lay siege upon Jerusalem and his people. And Jehoshaphat, frankly, didn't know what to do. So what he did was when he didn't know what to do, he decided to ask for some direction. And so he called out to God in prayer. If you go in your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, you can read word for word the prayer of Jehoshaphat when he didn't know what to do, his enemies pressed in around him. But I would like to read for you just very briefly one verse. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 12, Jehoshaphat prayed, O our God, 
We are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Jehoshaphat didn't know what to do, but he knew who did. And so he called out to the Lord in prayer, and he asked God to provide the direction that he so desperately needed. And you know, if you keep reading in 2 Chronicles, do you know what happened? God heard his prayer, and he responded, and he gave Jehoshaphat not only direction, but he gave him victory. God told Jehoshaphat he didn't even have to lift a finger that God would take care of his issue. And God caused all the enemies of Judah to fight amongst themselves until there was not a single one left. And God miraculously delivered the people of Judah that day as a result of the prayer of King Jehoshaphat. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the house, my prayer for you today is that you will keep your eyes on the one who knows what to do. I know that there are going to be times, maybe even today, as you meet in committees or as you even meet on this house floor and you are voting or making decisions, there are going to be moments where you question what you should do, question what is right, question what is the right direction that you should go, what is best for our state. There are going to be moments when you do not know what to do. And in those moments, I encourage you to call out to the one who does, to call out to the Lord for wisdom. He tells us that if we call to him, he will answer us and tell us great and mighty things that we do not know. So whatever situation you find yourself in today and in the coming days, I implore you to call out to the Lord for directions. Whether you think you know what to do or not, frankly, it doesn't matter what we think. It matters what the Lord thinks. And so I encourage you to seek him in all the decisions. And if you do, the Lord will see you to where you need to go as you follow him. Would you stand and let's join together in prayer this morning. Father God, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the opportunity today to gather with these fine ladies and gentlemen and share in time in your word together. I thank you for each of them, Lord. I thank you for what they do. I thank you for the dedication, uh, their dedication, Father, to the people of this state. I thank you for the sacrifices that they make, God, to come here uh, to make decisions and to lead our state well. Father, I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would protect them. I ask, God, that you would give them the energy and the strength that they need, Father, to, to accomplish the, the task that is set before them. And, Father, I pray that you would help them to be people of integrity in every decision that they make. And, Father, would you guide them? Lord, you tell us in your word, the word we read today, Lord, when we don't know what to do, you do. And so, Father, may we all be a people who look to you, Father, for direction and for wisdom. Father, our world has many ideas of what is right, but, Father, you set the standard. And so, God, may we lean on you. We love you, Father. May we look to you, Father, and may you lead us as we follow you. And we ask all these things in the name of your Son, who gives us salvation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. All right, uh, before we move on with our business, the chair wants to make an announcement. Testing will continue downstairs until 11 a.m. 11 a.m. You've got 30 minutes if you have not been tested. If you are present today and do not get a test, then you will not be admitted to the chamber or to the house on Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, please feel free, if you haven't gotten your test, to go take care of that at this time. 
Chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, the one who plants trees, knowing that he will never sit in their shade, has started to understand the meaning of life. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none in the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, 159th moves the following be established as the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none in the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 5, I represent of Scott of the 76th, Cannon the 58th, Mitchell the 88th, Jackson the 64th, and Bernal the 77th. They'll be entitled Act to Amend Chapter 27 of Title 50, the Fiscal to George Annotated, relating the lottery for education. Higher education. House Bill 7 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Gilliard of the 162nd, Parker of the 101st, Bentley of the 139th, Nelson of the 125th. They'll be entitled an act of men, Title 20 of the official code of George A. M. Taylor relating to education. Higher education. House Bill 11 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Davis of the 87th, Robichaux of the 48th, Schofield of the 60th, and Hutchinson of the 107th. They'll be entitled an act of men, Chapter 7 of Title 31 of the official code of George A. M. Taylor relating to regulation and construction of hospitals. Health and Human Services. House Bill 12 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Schofield of the 60th, Duke of the 154th, Mitchell of the 88th, and Hutchinson of the 107th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 13 and Title 16 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to controlled substances. Judiciary Non-Civil. House Bill 13 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Duke of the 154th, Davis of the 87th, Schofield of the 60th, Hutchinson of the 107th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 3, Title 35, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the Georgia Crime Information Center. Judiciary Non-Civil. House Bill 22 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Davis of the 87th, Cannon of the 58th, Jackson of the 64th, and Williams of the 168th. Bill be titled act to amend Part 2 of Article 1 of Chapter 3 of Title 8 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating the powers of housing authorities generally. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 195 by Representative Clark on the 108th, Dreyer on the 59th, Park on the 101st, Hutchinson on the 107th, Couch the 50th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 6 of Chapter 2 of Title 20, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to Equality Basic Education Act. Education. House Bill 196 by Representative Green on the 151st. Bill be titled an act to amend the act reconstituting the Board of Education of Terrell County. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 197 by Representative Lewis Ward of the 109th, Bodie of the 62nd, McLean of the 100th, Moore of the 95th, and Park of the 101st. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 34, the official code of Georgia annotated relating the general provisions relative to labor and industrial relations. Industry and Labor. House Bill 198 by Representative Singleton of the 71st, Smith of the 133rd, Williams of the 168th, Belton of the 112th, Gill Gilligan of the 24th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend code section 487, 27, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to copies that computation of taxable net income. Ways and Means. House Bill 199 by Representative w Walensky of the 79th, Collins the 68th, Rich of the 97th, Jones the 25th, Robichaux the 48th, and others. Bill be titled act to amend code section 40, 14, 18, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to enforcement of speed limit in school zones. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 200 by Representative Powell of the 32nd. A bill being titled an act to amend Title 40, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to motor vehicles and traffic. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 201 by Representative Evans, the 57th, Bruce, the 61st, Oliver, the 82nd, Ben of the 94th, Scott of the 76th, and others. 
They'll be taught on Act of Men, Chapter 2, and Title 20. The official go to George Ann Taylor related to elementary and secondary education. Education. House Bill 202 by Resident Hitchens, the 161st, Burns, the 159th, Petrie, the 166th, Lumsden, the 12th, and Gravely, the 67th. They'll be taught on Act of Men, Article 10, and Chapter 21 of Title 15. The official go to George Ann Taylor relating to the Georgia Drivers Education Commission. Motor vehicles. House Bill 203 by Representative Petrie of the 166th, Stevens the 164th, Deloach the 167th, Saints the 180th, Hitchens the 161st, and others. Bill being titled an Act of Men Code Section 4286, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to special license plates. Motor vehicles. House Bill 204 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Spirey the 135th, Bennett of the 94th, Schofield of the 60th, Bernal the 77th, and others. Bill being titled an Act to Provide a comprehensive state civil rights law protecting individuals from discrimination in housing. Judiciary. House Bill 205, Arizona of Williams, the 148th, Lumsden of the 12th, Hatchet of the 150th, Taylor, 173rd, Rhodes of the 120th, and others. Bill be taught on Act of Men, Title 33 of the official bill of Georgia Annotated relating to insurance. Insurance. House Bill 206 by Representative Jones of the 47th and Cantrell of the 22nd. Bill be titled an Act of Men and Act to incorporate the City of Milton in Fulton County, Georgia. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 207 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, Ridley the 6th, part of the 5th, Watson the 172nd, and Rhodes the 120th. Bill be titled an Act to Amend Title 40 of the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to motor vehicles and traffic. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 208 by Representative Chokas of the 138th, Jasper of the 11th, Irwin of the 28th, Larickia of the 169th, and Jones of the 25th. Bill be titled an Act to Amend Chapter 4, Title 1 of the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to holidays and observances. State Planning and Community Affairs. House Bill 209 by Representative McLeod of the 105th, Robichaux of the 48th, Clark of the 108th, McLean of the 100th, and Carter of the 92nd. The bill being titled an Act to Amend Chapter 4, Title 49, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to public assistance. Health and Human Services. House Bill 210 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, Barton of the 5th, Watson of the 172nd, Rose of the 120th, and Ridley of the 6th. The bill being titled an Act to Amend Article 2, Chapter 3 of Title 40, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to certificates of title of motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. House Resolution 1 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Cannon of the 58th, Mitchell of the 88th, Jackson of the 64th, and Bernal of the 77th. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution so as to authorize the General Assembly to provide for the proceeds of one or more lottery games. Higher Education. House Resolution 70 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Thomas of the 65th, Davis of the 87th, Buckner of the 137th, Evans of the 83rd and others, a resolution supporting a state goal of 100% clean energy by 2050. Natural Resources and Environment. House Resolution 71 by Representative Wilson of the 80th, Beverly of the 143rd, Williams of the 168th, Oliver of the 82nd, and Nullowitz of the 42nd and others, a resolution urging the United States Representative for Georgia's 14th Congressional District to resign from the 117th Congress. Rules. House Resolution 72 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Scott of the 76th, Davis of the 87th, McLeod of the 105th, Hutchinson of the 107th, and others. A resolution urging the United States Congress to enact legislation placing a moratorium on negative credit reporting during the pandemic. Banks and banking. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 1 by Representative Bonner of the 72nd, Earhart of the 36th, Jones of the 25th, Williams of the 145th, Gullet of the 19th, and others, a bill relating to education. House Bill 156 by Representative Parsons of the 44th, Martin of the 49th, Kelly of the 16th, Smith of the 133rd, Nix of the 69th, a bill relating to military, emergency management, and veteran affairs and state government. House Bill 157 by Representative Irwin of the 28th, and Anderson of the 10th, the bill to provide a new charter for the town of Mount Airy. House Bill 158 by Representative Crow of the 110th, Gamble of the 15th, McDonald of the 26th, and Williams of the 145th, the bill relating to general provisions relative to registration, operation, and sale of watercraft. House Bill 159 by Representative Parsons of the 44th, Martin of the 49th, Kelly of the 16th, Smith of the 133rd, Nix of the 69th, the bill relating to military, emergency management, and veterans affairs. 
House Bill 160, by Representative Bodie of the 62nd, Dreyer of the 59th, Schofield of the 60th, a bill relating to water and sewer projects and cost tax. House Bill 161, by Representative Tankersley of the 160th, Dickey of the 140th, Fleming of the 121st, Richard the 97th, Houston of the 170th, a bill relating to downtown development authorities. House Bill 162, by Representative Belton of the 112th, a bill to amend an act to create the Board of Elections and Registration for Morgan County. House Bill 163 by Representative Cooper of the 43rd, Gaines of the 117th, Dempsey of the 13th, Fry of the 118th, Thumson of the 12th, a bill relating to medical assistance. House Bill 164 by Representative Douglas of the 78th, Cooper of the 43rd, Fry of the 118th, Stevens of the 164th, and Evans of the 57th, a bill relating to insurance. House Bill 165 by Representative Barr of the 103rd, Hitchens of the 161st, Clark of the 147th, Meeks of the 178th, Thumson of the 12th, and others. A bill relating to horns, exhaust systems, mirrors, windshields, tires, safety belts, and energy absorption systems. House Bill 166 by Representative Earhart of the 36th, a bill relating to the State Bar of Georgia. House Bill 167 by Representative Davis of the 87th, McLeod of the 105th, Scott of the 76th, Schofield of the 60th, Barnell of the 77th, and others. A bill relating to state government. House Bill 168 by Representative Petrie of the 166th, Stevens of the 164th, Williamson of the 115th, Fleming of the 121st, Clark of the 147th, and others. Bill relating to confidentiality of information supplied by inmates. House Bill 169 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, Ridley of the 6th, Montahan of the 17th, Perkle of the 155th, Watson of the 172nd. Bill relating to requirements for issuance of commercial driver's license or instruction permit. House Bill 170 by Representative Park of the 101st, Drenner of the 85th, Mitchell of the 106th, Clark of the 108th, Fry of the 118th, and others. A bill relating to imposition rate and computation of income tax. House Bill 171 by Representative Park of the 101st, Bentley of the 139th, Hughley of the 136th, Robichaud of the 48th, Fry of the 118th, and others. A bill relating to income tax, imposition rate, computation, and exemptions. House Bill 172 by Representative Dickey of the 140th and Washburn of the 141st. A bill to amend an act incorporating the city of Culloden and the county of Monroe. House Bill 173 by Representative Benton of the 31st, Warkaj of the 157th, Stevens of the 164th, McDonald of the 26th, Wedauer of the 119th, a bill relating to eligible large retirement systems authorized to invest in certain alternative investments. House Bill 174 by Representative Wedauer of the 119th, Gaines of the 117th, Smith of the, of the 18th, Crow of the 110th, Leverett of the 33rd, and others, a bill relating to safe operations of motor carriers, commercial motor vehicles, and drivers, safe transportation of hazardous materials and penalties. House Bill 175. By Representative Bodie of the 62nd, Jackson of the 64th, McLaurin of the 51st, Schofield of the 60th, Bennett of the 94th, and others, a bill relating to assault and battery, House Bill 176, by Representative Buckner of the 137th, Oliver of the 82nd, Clark of the 108th, Williams of the 37th, Allen of the 40th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions relative to solid waste management. House Bill 177, by Representative Bonner of the 72nd, Jones of the 47th, Reeves of the 34th, Bridge of the 97th, Lot of the 122nd, and others, Bill relating to general provisions regarding torts. House Bill 178 by Representative Bonner of the 72nd, Ballinger of the 23rd, of Jones of the 47th, Gaines of the 117th, Baysmore of the 63rd, and others. A bill relating to name change. House Bill 179 by Representative Camp of the 131st, Rich of the 97th, Bird of the 20th, Holmes of the 129th, Matthew of the 73rd, and others. A bill relating to special license plates. House Bill 180 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Maynard of the 56th, Lopez of the 86th, Thomas of the 65th, Bill relating to general provisions of state government, House Bill 181 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Park of the 101st, Maynard of the 56th, Thomas of the 65th, Fry of the 118th, Bill relating to general provisions of labor and industrial relations, House Bill 182 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Lopez of the 86th, Maynard of the 56th, Thomas of the 65th, and Bill relating to the Department of Economic Development. House Bill 183 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Maynard of the 56th, Thomas of the 65th, Bill relating to the Fair Business as Practices Act. House Bill 184 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Maynard of the 56th, Thomas of the 65th, a bill relating to unfair or deceptive practices in consumer transactions, unlawful and examples. House Bill 185 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Maynard of the 56th, a bill relating to horns, exhaust systems, mirrors, windshields, tire safety belts, and energy absorption systems. House Bill 186 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Maynard of the 56th, Lopez of the 86th, Thomas of the 65th, a bill relating to zoning procedures. House Bill 187 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Mayor of the 56th, Thomas of the 65th, a bill relating to general provisions applicable to counties, municipal corporations, and other government entities. House Bill 188 by Representative Lim of the 99th, Mayor of the 56th, Win of the 89th, Thomas of the 65th, a bill relating to eligibility and procedures for certain certification of minority business enterprises and appeal of denial. House Bill 189 by Representative Wilson of the 80th. Beverly of the 143rd, Wikugli of the 136th, Bennett of the 94th, Evans of the 57th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions regarding the General Assembly. House Bill 190 by Representative Holcomb of the 81st, Paris of the 142nd, Kennard of the 102nd, 
Mitchell of the 106, Hughley of the 136, and others. A bill relating to penal institutions. House Bill 191 by Resident Benton of the 31st. Powell of the 32nd. Smyre of the 135th. Green of the 151st. Parish of the 158th, and others. A bill relating to Georgia legislative retirement system. House Bill 192 by Representative Sains of the 180th. Burchett of the 176th. Substration of the 104th. And Hitchens of the 161st. A bill relating to interference with electronic monitoring devices. House Bill 193 by Representative Sains of the 180th, Burchett of the 176th, Abstration of the 104th, and Hitchens of the 161st, a bill relating to sexual assault protocol. House Bill 194 by Representative Sains of the 180th, Burchett of the 176th, Abstration of the 104th, Hitchens of the 161st, bill relating to procedure for sentencing and imposition of punishment. House Resolution 52 by Representative Dempsey of the 13th, Campbell of the 15th, Oliver 82nd, Cooper of the 43rd, Parrish of the 158th, Resolution creating a Joint Study Committee on Childhood Lead Exposure. House Resolution 53 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Scott of the 76th, Davis of the 87th, McLeod of the 105th, Hutchinson of the 107th, and others. Resolution urging Congress to place a moratorium on the three main credit reporting bureaus, suspend credit downgrades, and remove other negative impacts on personal or business credit reports during the pandemic. House Resolution 54 by Representative Estration of the 104th, Resolution honoring the life of Mayor Jimmy Wilbanks and dedicating a road in his memory. House Resolution 55 by Representative Wilson of the 80th, Hughley of the 136th, Bennett of the 94th, Evans of the 57th, Roberts of the 52nd, and others. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution so as to provide that the legislative and congressional reapportionment be done by an independent nonpartisan commission instead of the General Assembly. House Resolution 56 by Representative Singleton of the 71st, Powell of the 32nd, Hogan of the 179th, Tarvin of the 2nd, Cantrell of the 22nd, and others. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the State of Georgia so as to clarify that only citizens of the United States who are residents of this state shall have a right to vote in elections in this state. Through second readers.
Okay, we're going on now to morning orders. Going on to morning orders. If you have signed up for a morning order, chair is going to ask that you limit your remarks to no more than two minutes each. And also, if you signed up for one to make your way to the front of the chamber, chair recognizes Chairman Darlene Taylor for a morning order. The House will be at order. <laughs> Chairman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I come to honor one of South Georgia's favorite sons, Jackie Robinson. He was born, it was 102 years ago yesterday, January 31st, 1919 in Cairo, Georgia, to Jerry and Mally Robinson. Jackie was the youngest of five children. After his father left his family, the mother moved them to Cal Pasadena, California. He graduated from Washington Junior High School and went on to John Moore High School, where his athletic abilities were discovered. He excelled in many, many sports. After completing his studies in high school, he attended Pasadena Junior College, where he graduated in 1939. He enrolled at the University of California and became the university's first student to win a varsity letter in four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and track. Jackie's oldest brother, Matthew, inspired him to pursue his talents and love of athletics. Matthew won a silver medal in the 200-meter dash just behind Jesse Owens at the 1936 Olympics. But we remember him as one of the most inspiring and towering figures of the 20th century. Jackie Robinson was the first African-American to play Major League Baseball in the United States. On April 15, 1947, he broke the decades-old color line of Major Baseball. Ball. Not only did he set an example, but he helped a whole generation of young African American players enter Major League Baseball. After Robinson's death in 1972, his wife Ra Rachel established the Jackie Robinson Foundation. It's dedicating to honoring his life and work. The foundation helps young people in need by providing scholarships and mentoring. It lives on today in Cairo in our Boys and Girls Club, which is named after him. I leave you with one of his quotes, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. Thank you. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Bodie for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise this morning at the loss of my dear friend, Merritt Johnson III of Macon, Georgia. A lot of you know that this session has been um, quite difficult for me and my family. I have now lost two grandmothers, a best friend, and a great aunt in the span of a 30, 30 days. I normally do not come to the well on personal issues, but strictly for policy. But when I saw my dear leader and dear friend, James Beverly, speak on behalf of my grandmothers, I didn't have to do it myself. But my friend Mary Johnson suffered from MLS. He was diagnosed in 2011. He was confined to a wheelchair seven, eight years ago. But that did not keep him from serving the citizens of Macon, Georgia. In a wheelchair, he was able to continue to serve his community. Last year, he ran for a special election to the Making Water Authority and served as a board member for an uninspired term. He had to run again this fall in November. He did not prevail, but he kept serving. He served the 100 black men of Macon in Middle Georgia. He served the Macon one Rama alumni chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, for which I'm a proud member. He did not stop serving. And so friends, I'm asking you in this body that it really won't matter what bill that you pass, HB 101, HB 102, but the service to your community, the service to your constituents, 
and the service to your district and the state of Georgia will, will, will be what you remember for. So when the last time I talked to Jay, my friend, he said, I got to keep serving. So I'm asking you all here, politics aside, policy aside, people first, and constituents first. Let's all continue to serve. And I want to remember today for my friend on the first day of Black History Month, Jay Mary Johnson as my hero, my black history trailblazer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Glanton for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the House. I can't tell you what a great honor it is, and it's quite humbling uh, for me to be standing before you today under the circumstances. But I am honored to be here this morning and humble. Today, uh, I have a black history moment. I was not aware that we had two others, but that's okay. Um, my black history moment this morning is about a gentleman that most of us know. Someone that we see almost on a daily basis or hear about or know about. And if I began to talk about all the things that this gentleman has accomplished and done, it's legendary. And we wouldn't have enough time if I took all week to tell you about the great accolades and things that he's received and the achievements that he's accomplished throughout uh, his life and his service to this state and this country. My Black History Moment this morning is on the one and only Calvin Smiley. As I said, I have about seven pages of things that I know the speaker ain't gonna let me. Hang no, on. We're not going to do seven pages, but I'll give you a few more, a little bit more time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You are so have, generous. Uh, Leader Beverly, come up and start taking the pages away <laughs> from you. But I would tell you that rather than go through his professional and political careers, I would tell you that what's most outstanding for me is his character, his integrity, his servant leadership his desire to get up each and every day and do something for someone else. I don't have to tell you this because you see this. You know this. You have witnessed this. And it's very subtle. I've been all around the world. I've met a lot of legendary people. But it's very seldom that you have the opportunity to stand side by side of such a legendary gentleman as Calvin Smiley. He has helped so many people throughout his travels, boys and girls, men and women that he would never ever know, but have benefited from the things that he's done. Just to mention a few, the Georgia Dome, the Martin Luther King Jr. Ho uh, holiday, the changing of the Georgia state flag, serving and the board of trustees of Columbus State University, 
a lot of different universities throughout this state. 38 years with Synovus, 47 years with the Georgia General Assembly. You don't get there by being selfish. And so I'd certainly thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the extra time. I wish I could tell you so much more about this man. But if you ever get an opportunity, read up on it. I learned some things. And so, Dean of the House, thank you for the example that you have set for me. Thank you for your honesty, your integrity, and your character. And thank you for your love of this chamber. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I yield the well. Representative encouraged everyone to read up on Dean Samari. Better yet, just spend some time with him. You'll know you're in a special place. Chair recognizes Representative Wade. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and as a freshman, I, I have no idea how I can follow that, but I do appreciate the opportunity to be here with all my peers. Uh, today, I just wanted to bring a little bit of good news from back home, and I know we've had a tough, you know, 12, 13 months in this state and in this nation, but I also want to showcase that while there is trouble in trial, there's also a lot of excellence going on. And today, I bring to you from my hometown the story of a young man his name is Palmer Hartley. He's a junior in high school, and he was recognized as the state winner of the Georgia Music Asso Educators Association Composition Contest. This young man wrote an entire music piece, as well as all the lyrics, for a song called Journey to the Stars, and it was performed recently on Ju this weekend in our hometown for the entire state. This young man is a junior again. He plays trumpet in the band and uh, he's an aspiring film composer. And I just come to you today just to recognize that while there, are, are, there is trouble in our land, there's a lot of folks that are taking that situation and spending their time. This young man started this work back during the beginning stages of the pandemic. And I got to speak with his teacher, and they just said, you know, music is one of those great equalizers. We all love it. We all got our own vocation with it. We all have our preference. But while we're down here, he said, I know you don't make music, but I sure hope that you guys, just like the person before said, will focus on people, and let's just make sure that this is a body that doesn't create dissonance. And with that, I yield the well, and I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Chair recognizes Representative Yasmin Neal for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the House colleagues. On this first day of Black History Month, I would like to honor Shirley Chisholm. Like a true trailblazer, she was the first African-American woman elected to US Congress and the first African-American woman to run for President of the United States under a majority party ticket. Although her campaign was unsuccessful, she became a legend and a beacon of inspiration for women and girls of all races across the world for generations to come. She always remained unbought and unbossed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the will. The clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Honoring the life and memory of Charlie Edward Matthews. Recognizing and commending Adrian Meeks and for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. We do not have 
any birthdays today, if you've signed up for an announcement, make your way to the front of the chamber now and be prepared. Chair's just been advised that uh, Representative Dewey McLean's wife had a uh, pretty serious health issue this weekend, and so uh, I didn't know that till now, but let's hold them in prayer and in our thoughts. Chair recognizes Chairman Billy Mitchell for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just wanted to let you know that the Minority Caucus will have a meeting via Zoom this afternoon at 12 noon. You may go pick up your box lunch in room 216 and be prepared for the meeting via Zoom at noon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Mike Chokas for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, first meeting of the Small Business Development Committee will be tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, February 2nd at 8 a.m. in 506 CLOB. We'll have reports from the National Federation of Independent Business and the Georgia First Commission. Please be there. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Jay Collins for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to remind everyone that the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee will meet today at 606 CLOB at 1 o'clock for a brief meeting. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Doreen Carter for an announcement. Good morning. Thank you, colleagues. Happy New Year. As you know, it's February 1st. It is Heart Month. And uh, we want to challenge you again this year with our 21-day veggie challenge. We're not trying to take your meat. We wanted you to encourage, to encourage you to eat more vegetables. Then on Thursday, we're asking everyone to wear red for Go Red for Women. The official day is Friday. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Matt Dollar for an announcement. Thank you, Speaker. The uh, first meeting for the Creative Arts and Entertainment Committee will be today at 1.30 upstairs in 403. It'll be an organizational meeting, and we're going to be receiving a, an update for, on the status of the film industry right now. Thank you. The chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. On the motion of the majority leader that this house be adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. on Groundhog Day, Tuesday, February the 2nd. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. This house will be adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday, February 2, 2021. 